Live from New York City, it's The Gary Null Show. And now, your host, Gary Null. Hi, I'm Gary Null. I'd like to welcome you to The Classroom on the Air. First of all, we have a lot of new people watching us over YouTube and Rumble and Odyssey and PRN.Live. A little background, because I'm sure you're thinking, well, is this the health guy? Yes, this is the health guy. About my background, I have a background in nutrition science. I'm a registered dietitian and have been for almost 50 years, half a century. I also have undergraduate degrees in science, nutritional science, a PhD with honors in human nutrition and public health science, and work for over 36 years at the Institute of Applied Biology as the uh, Senior Research Fellow and Director of the Anti-Aging um, Center. I've conducted over 56 clinical trials. I have counseled tens of thousands of individuals, and I've had probably two or 300,000 people attend uh, classes over the years. Uh, some as large as 700 people in a class took a whole auditorium. And I've written over 100 books, uh, produced over 100 documentaries, and closing in on 1,000 articles. I've published in peer-reviewed journals, and I've talked before scientific conferences throughout the country. That's just a little background. So when I'm talking about information and I'm sharing it with you, I try to always use information directly from the National Library of Medicine because that's the finest peer-reviewed literature that we have. That's our repository. So it may sound like it's something you know out in left field, it is not. In fact, what I've discovered is the finest science validating a healthy, natural lifestyle comes from orthodox medicine and science. It's just not applied. I'm going to focus on one issue today. Now, one issue is high blood pressure because we have a literal epidemic of high blood pressure or hypertension, both those who are on medication and then even a larger number who are not aware of this silent killer. And they call it a silent killer because there's frequently no symptoms. I mean, it's just, boom, it happens. But I also saw, including a member of my own family, that you can have micro seizures, tiny seizures that don't disable you. And so you get over them, you think you're okay. Maybe it was just something, a little anomaly. It isn't. In fact, autopsies have shown and people who've had micro seizures, the brain is just dotted with little white uh, tabs. And instead of the larger uh, white that you see with a beta amyloid plaque in people with Alzheimer's and dementia, no, these are tiny. And in the case of one of my family members, uh, they had to take Dilantin to keep their temperament down. Now, why is this important? And why is the information I'm about to share could save your life. First of all, historically, the people who had dementia or Alzheimer's, and it was very rare where I grew up because people didn't long, live long enough to develop it. They died in their 60s and 50s because everybody smoked. I mean, everybody. In my family, I was the only person, of course, didn't smoke, but the rest of them smoked two, three, four packs a day. Secondhand smoke alone uh, causes a lot of health problems. But then they also drank. They didn't drink to get drunk. It was just part of the social norm in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, in colleges and high school, and but at home as well. Every drink you have destroys cells, depending upon how much alcohol you have, a bourbon, a gin, a vodka, uh, any of those hard whiskeys, uh, you're going to kill over a million brain cells, a million lung cells, you'll kill heart cells, yeah, liver cells, the very organs that when you're young, you don't think about. Because who thinks about disease and death when you're in your teens and 20s and 30s? And then that builds up. That's cumulative. Now, nobody ever dies of a heart attack or stroke from having one hamburger or one smoking, uh, smoking one cigarette or having one, uh, one let's say, uh, French fries. It doesn't happen that way. 
But once you've had those French fries every day for 20 years, yeah, yeah, then your arteries are clogged and damaged. The interior of the artery, what is called the epithelium, it should be smooth and it's not. It's frequently clogged with cholesterol and other debris. And there's tiny little cuts and scratches in there. And then that causes your blood to be forced through the arteries with greater pressure. That's one of the causes. Yet you don't feel it. And also in the blood, we have three really bad, actually more, but I'm giving only three, uh, inflammatory markers that can cause a heart attack or stroke. Uh, one is the LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, versus the HDL, which is the good cholesterol. And then you have what is called homocysteine. Now, when the numbers are up on that, and you won't feel it, you won't know it, you could have a heart attack or stroke. And also fibrinogen, and when that's elevated, that's bad. And triglycerides, another form of fat, when those are elevated. So how do you get these things elevated? Well, simple. Eat the standard American diet. High in trans fats, processed foods, uh, meat, animal proteins, refined carbohydrates, high fructose, uh, coffee, and carbonated soft drinks. That is what we do on a daily basis. In fact, the latest study I could find shows that only 7% of the American population make active, conscious, healthy choices every day. Okay, that's not a small number. That's about 25 million people. Yeah. Now compare that to 335 million Americans who make unhealthy choices. And so we're seeing kids who will not outlive their parents because of their diet and the mother's diet. We have obesity at a level we've never seen in our history. When I grew up, I only knew two people who were overweight. Now, I'm not talking about obese. I'm talking about being overweight as uh, when they, we were kids, because one was a friend of mine. The whole family was overweight because they ate very unhealthy foods and they ate too much. Where the average person, when I was growing up, at least they liked to keep themselves trim. And uh, it was only when they got older that people generally gained weight, became diabetic, had high blood pressure and heart disease. And people died of strokes and heart attacks or cancers all the time. So now what we have is we have the Z generation, the millennials, um, who have people in their 20s and 30s who now have prematuring of the aging process. In part, that was due to COVID and the lockdown for three years or the resistance in being outside and active and healthy, uh, it caused depression, caused anxiety, caused people to eat in and order food in. And almost always, that's not going to be healthy food, to be fast food. And because people were just more going out as often to markets, buying food, bring it home, preparing it. You certainly didn't see anyone advocating for fresh juices. Uh, no. Nope, and television played a big role in this because almost every commercial you watch is for an unhealthy item that produces disease. But you know, unlike the medications, at least the medications, it says, well, if you have uh, if you have the sniffles, if you have runny nose, take this medication. Oh, and by the way, the side effects can be heart attack and death. All right, you have a choice. But what about when you're eating something that you see everyone else eating? and you're supposed to feel good about it, or drinking something, and all these young, attractive men and women that are drinking it and dancing and floating through the air. Like it's really a, it's a beverage eu euphoria moment. No, no. Go in your body when that alcohol goes in and look at what happens to your cells. And they become deranged and uh, figuratively. And then the mindset can change uh, our whole body, meaning what you believe and what you think can actually change and alter the way genes express themselves in your body. Happy people, happy genes. Negative people, toxic people, depressed people, anxious people, sarcastic people, um, uh, demeaning people. Not good for the genes. So healthy food creates healthy bodies. Unhealthy food creates unhealthy bodies because you are everything that you eat, drink, and think. Remember, about 74% of your body is liquid, water. 
So having healthy water, clean water, or beverages like fresh juices rather than soft, soft drinks, and we don't think about the amount of sugar, fructose, and what we eat and drink. All this causes our arteries to be damaged, our heart to be damaged, and can also cause high blood pressure. Why? How much sodium do you need in a day? Do you know? It's about 800 milligrams more or less. That's not a lot. If you have a healthy diet, you can get that 700 to 800 milligrams of sodium without a problem. But you go into a fast food restaurant and you're not going to eat heavy today, just you're going to have the burger, right? But that burger today isn't just a burger. It's generally two burgers with cheese. It's frequently onion rings or french fries on top of it. Yeah, and even eggs in the morning and or sausages and bacon. I mean, it's it's a strange and bizarre concoction. First of all, it's too much protein. It's about it's about four days worth of protein in one meal, and the body can't store protein. So you tax your system when you're trying to break down all the protein that you shouldn't have eaten. How much protein do you actually need? One forkful. Yeah. About two ounces at a meal. That's it of meat. Because you're getting 20, 20, uh, 8.35 grams to an ounce. And let's just say that you're having two ounces, right? Where well, you're having near 60 grams of protein in one item at one meal. It would be the same if you had steak or chicken or even fish. But we like the big plates. We like to feel full. As a result, we are the most obese nation per population in world history. And when you're overweight, just overweight, you shorten your lifespan. When you're obese, you really shorten your lifespan. When you're morbidly obese, which a lot of Americans are, well, you can just take as much as 20, 30 years off your lifespan. Now, in that meal, you're going to have salt. And we salt everything. Do you ever watch people in a restaurant they get a bowl of soup, and before they even taste it, they throw in the salt. So we're eating upwards of anywhere between two to 5,000 milligrams of sodium in a given fast food meal, especially on the French fries. Because even if they have salt, which they do, we resalt them. That is a prescription for disaster. As a result, that raises your blood pressure. You won't feel it. You won't know it. And then you get the stroke. And a lot of people now are dying from the strokes. How many people? The best guesstimate that I can find from reviewing all the scientific literature and reviewing the journals on hypertension is about 90 million Americans. Oh, those are what we call stable hypertensive, meaning they're on medication. And that medication has terrible side effects on your kidneys. And in fact, if you're eating the standard American diet and having all the sugary beverages and alcohol, your kidneys are going to be under stress and frequently dysfunctional. You could even have renal failure. But then the medications they give you to lower your blood pressure also help destroy the kidneys. So it's a, it's a negative circle here. You have high blood pressure, you take a medication. The medication harms the kidneys. The kidneys are responsible for helping to control a lot of biochemical factions in the body, including blood pressure. So it just gets worse. Now you got two medications. And I'm, I counseled someone yesterday that's on three blood pressure lowering medications and didn't know that the renal failure could have been dough, didn't have it before, to the medications. And I said, you should speak with your physician and ask why is he putting you on three medications and you still have high blood pressure, but you also have kidney failure. Oh, by the way, this person didn't know they had kidney failure. It was in their medical records she handed me. That's not good. So what can we do? What's the positive message here? First of all, get off the salt. You don't need it. If you want something that tastes salty, like I like baked potatoes, in which case I'll bake a potato a longer period of time but at a lower temperature because there's a lot of good nutrients in there, including calcium, magnesium, and alpha lipoic acid. And then I open up the potato, and then I'll put in some raw red onions. That's terrific. That lowers blood pressure, kills bacteria and viruses in the throat. 
and it's very good for you. And then I'll saute some garlic lightly so it's translucent but not burnt. And I put garlic in there. So I got raw onions, gives it a different mouthfeel and crunch, and the sauteed and uh, garlic. But I also saute shiitake mushrooms with that. And then I put extra virgin olive oil in them. And then I squeeze lemon juice or lime juice or a combination because lemon and lime brought together on an item like a salad gives you a salty flavor, gives you the satisfaction of that, that bitterness. But there's no sodium. All right? So you use that instead. Also, have at least three times a day a green vegetable juice, preferably with celery, because celery seed extract, you can buy them in little capsules. They come from celery. So celery juice is terrific. It'll lower blood pressure. Celery seed extract lowers blood pressure. One of the best things you can do as this garlic. In fact, there's liquid garlic. Comes in a little bottle and you just spritz it into the cap that it comes with about an ounce. You take it down. Doesn't even leave the, leave the garlic taste in the after breath. Also, magnesium, 500 milligrams of magnesium in the morning and the afternoon, and calcium, about uh, 400 milligrams of calcium in the morning and afternoon with magnesium, and potassium, because if you're drinking coconut water, and you should, it's the best hydration you can get, it's loaded with potassium, and potassium is needed to maintain blood, uh, blood pressure. You need that potassium because of what it does with sodium at the pump level inside the sodium potassium pump. But when you have too much sodium, you notice, look down at your ankles. They'll be swollen. That's edema. Water collects because water's coming out of the cell. So you want low sodium, higher potassium. Coconut water is one of your best sources. You want the electrolytes. Your vegetables and fruits give you the electrolytes. Having a piece of watermelon gives you electrolytes. Having a handful of grapes gives you electrolytes. And then you want the good fats. They also are important. A handful of walnuts, a handful of almonds, or almond or walnut butter. That also is great for the heart because it's got the good fatty acids in it. Have at least 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams a day of the omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3, 6, 9, 12, all together. Hemp seed oil, black seed oil, avocados, one of the best things you can have is an avocado a day. An avocado a day keeps a heart attack away. You can also have apples. And that apple skin, buy them organic because that apple skin not just has good fiber, it has quercetin. Onions, quercetin. And onions also help with blood pressure, but it also helps fight viruses. And it helps keep from bruising and helps wounds to speed up their healing. It's not difficult. So when you're looking at keeping your blood pressure in check, vitamin C, quercetin, and to help the heart, coenzyme Q10, also L-carnitine, C-A-R-N-I-T-I-N-E, carnitine. It helps the heart and brain, gives it energy, and that's important. Magnesium is one of the most important, is the most important mineral for your heart and blood pressure. Zinc for your overall immune system. And then lots of juices, fresh made juices. Make yourself a glass of fresh grapefruit juice and put one lemon, uh, the juice of one lemon in that. It helps slightly alkalize the body and that helps reduce pain. You see, it's not difficult to have healthy blood pressure. Every person I've ever worked with, I've been able to bring their blood pressure down to normal, no medications because of what they keep out of the diet and what they add into the diet. All right, that's our classroom on the air today and follow it because I believe it can help you. It can also save lives. Have a nice day. Are you tired of closed-minded programming? Well, look no further than PRN.Live, the home for progressive voices.